Galaxy Z Fold 2 5G. Now that does not get old. And I feel like in a world where pretty much every smartphone out there is just a flat slab of glass, it's so refreshing to see a new technology like folding phones come out and just kind of disrupt things and give a new take on what a smartphone can be. And I feel like this is another example of when Samsung is just a little bit ahead of the curve. Like with the original Note, everyone kind of mocked it and said, why does anybody need a phone that big? But now if you look around, all the flagships are bigger than that original Note was. And with the Fold, people are saying a lot of the same things. Like why would you need a tablet in your pocket? And I'm kind of hoping that in the future, folding technology becomes standard and available to everybody at a much cheaper price. Now I know that this isn't Samsung's first folding phone. They did have the one last year, but this is what I kind of consider to be the first consumer ready phone. And what I mean mean by that is just that last year's version seemed to have a lot of really obvious oversights that were kind of unacceptable in my opinion. And I think the main thing that makes me say that is two things really is just that the cover display on the original fold was tiny and even on the main display they had a huge notch on there and it's really frustrating because we knew at that point that samsung could do better and it wasn't as if samsung was lacking the technology to include a larger cover screen and a smaller notch on the main display it kind of just felt like they were putting out the phone just to show people that they could make a folding phone and just forgot about all the other features so i was really glad to see that with this version of the fold they solved both of those problems and even added some upgrades on top of that. So I've been using this phone for about two weeks now and I'm ready to share some of my thoughts on it and hopefully it'll help you guys decide if you want one as well. So first impressions of this phone is just that it screams premium. I did an unboxing video of this phone when I first got it and you guys can see my raw reactions on that video but I was pretty much speechless. It just looks and feels really premium and super nice and I think my single favorite upgrade in the design department has to be the matte glass back and I know that Samsung isn't the first company to have a matte glass back on their phone but honestly I feel like it's just a little bit better than the other ones I felt. It feels really smooth and almost buttery. Also the way that the light reflects off of it makes it look like it's almost glowing and I just absolutely love it. I was actually originally planning on getting a skin or a case for this phone just because it's so expensive and I don't want to ruin it but I almost feel like it's a crime to cover this up. But Samsung also remembered to include some shiny parts just for that bling factor so that other people can know that you just dropped 2k on a phone. The hinge in the surround material are made out of a shiny metal and they actually resist fingerprints quite well which I was really happy about. Like the Note 10 Plus that I had before was gloss everywhere and it was just a fingerprint magnet and it was just really hard to keep it clean especially when I was trying to film it. The side rails have a kind of brush finish on them and one thing I thought was really cool is just the direction of the grooves make it kind of easier to open it. They give you a little bit of grip and I think it's really nice and a good attention to detail. And the camera bump while huge looks really good in my opinion. It has a mirror finish kind of on the whole module and then around each camera lens it has a shiny ring which I think makes it look really classy and really expensive looking. And just one little note about the color, the one I have here Samsung calls it mystic bronze but in reality it's probably closer to pinkish rose gold. Now personally I don't really mind it, I think it still looks really good but it's just something you should be aware of. And you could go for the black version if you want a more stealthy look but just be aware that the matte glass is only on the mystic bronze version and not the black. And that's why I kind of got this one over the black version because that was just a little bit of a deal breaker for me. But overall, I'm really happy with the design of this phone. I think it looks really Samsung, but in a very good way. Build quality also seems to be very good and it definitely has some heft to it. It weighs 282 grams and that combined with the color of the phone just makes it kind of feel like you're carrying a gold bar in your pocket. And personally, I don't really mind the heft. It feels a little bit more substantial and like they use good materials which they did. On the cover display you get the latest from Corning Gorilla Glass Victus and on the rear you get Gorilla Glass 6. And on the main display you get Samsung's own ultra thin glass, which comes protected with a plastic screen protector which I've been too afraid to remove myself. Samsung recommends that you take it to a Samsung store and have a professional remove it, but I have seen videos on YouTube where people remove it themselves and it goes fine. For me though, this is just a little bit too expensive to take risks on so I'm just not going to do it for now. I might try to do it at a later date 
update when it just doesn't feel so new, but for now I'm just gonna leave it on. And pretty much everything else on the phone that isn't glass is made out of metal, which I feel like is probably where a lot of the weight comes from. And everything on the phone that you interact with feels really nice and almost makes you feel like you got your money's worth, especially the hinge. Samsung definitely over-engineered this hinge and I'm glad they did because it feels great. They basically made two upgrades to the hinge from last year's version, the first one being a micro sweeper technology where it'll just brush away debris when you're opening and closing the device, which I think will help a lot in terms of durability. They also included a cam system which will allow you to open the fold and have it stay open at certain angles. And that enables flex mode which allows for a lot of cool features in software which I'll get into later. The buttons also feel nice and tactile and they integrated the fingerprint sensor into the power button. It works really well and I don't really have any complaints about it but I do kind of hope that that they put it under the screen next year. Performance is also really great on this phone. I mean, it's got all the 2020 flagship specs like Snapdragon 865 Plus, and this year, no Exynos version to my knowledge, which a lot of you will probably be very happy about. 12 gigs of RAM, Adreno 650 GPU, 256 gigs of storage, and that's the only option unless you live in China or Hong Kong, and then you get an option for 512. And it has 5G, which is cool and all, but I don't feel like it's really changed the way I use the phone whatsoever. But I've had no issues using the phone at all, navigating through the UI, playing games, watching videos, videos, anything, no lag whatsoever. One thing that was a little bit disappointing though was the battery life. So it has a 4500 milliamp hour battery but it's split into two cells and that just kind of inherently makes it a little bit less efficient and I've been able to get through a whole day with very careful use but if I'm doing anything intensive at all, like watching a lot of videos or anything like that, then I will probably have to charge well before the end of the day. But I do say that with a caveat though, that I use the main screen at pretty much full brightness about 90% of the time. And to charge it back up, it only supports 25 watt wired and 11 watt wireless. And that was a little bit weird to me because both of those numbers are lower than the Note 10 Plus that I had, which released last year. But charging speeds seem to be okay, but not great. I didn't really time it or anything, but it definitely feels slower than the Note 10 Plus I had, but it's not so slow that I feel like I'm pulling my teeth out. But I think the one thing that makes me forget about all of that, or I guess two things, are the screens. The front screen is, well, it's okay. It's 6.2 inches, 60 hertz, and I find it you know, fine to look at, but the one little complaint I have about it is that the bezels are still quite thick. Even though they made it bigger from last year's version, I still think that they could have done a lot better. The bezels are still significantly thicker than other phones in Samsung's lineup, like the S20 or the Note 20 Ultra. And it's just especially noticeable because on the left side of the phone, you also have the added real estate of the hinge. So it just feels like you have an extra, extra thick bezel on the left side, and it feels like they could have done something about that. I think that the actual panel itself is pretty good though. And Samsung generally does a good job on screens. The colors are good, it's pretty sharp, and it gets reasonably bright as well. The main display though is where it's at and it's the reason that you get this phone. It is 7.6 inches of pure awesome. Like I, that is the only word to describe it. It's HDR10 plus certified, gets bright enough for use even on bright days, and it has 120 hertz adaptive refresh rate. And all of that combined with just the size of the screen makes it incredible for watching movies or shows, playing games, or even just navigating through the UI. Having 120 hertz refresh rate on such a large screen makes a huge difference. And a lot of the time, I'll just find myself navigating through the UI, like going through the home screen and stuff like that, even if I have nothing to do just because it looks so good. Media consumption on this phone is also next level. Not only do you get a great big screen, the speakers are also really great as well. I mean, they won't be replacing your Bluetooth speaker if you have one, but they do sound very good for phone speakers. I do have one little gripe with them though, and that's that they're kind of easy to cover up, even though there are two of them. So both speaker ports are located on the left side of the phone. And if you're trying to watch a full screen video horizontally on the main screen, then the speaker ports are located exactly where you're going to place your hands. And if you try to hold it the other way, you're going to be groping the camera bump, which is not ideal either. So I feel like it would have been nice if they put the speaker ports on the same side as the cameras. And another little issue with watching video on the main screen is that if you have it as a full screen video, then the selfie camera is still going to be inside the frame. I mean, it's not a huge deal. It's not a big camera hole, but at the same time, I feel like it would have been a really easy fix just to move the camera hole to the corner instead of the middle of that half. People also ask me a lot of the time whether or not the crease bothers me. And the truth is, no, it doesn't really bother me that much. I barely notice that it's there most of the time. And I feel like the reason people ask me about it all the time 
is that they're looking at it off axis. If you're looking at the screen straight on, then the crease almost disappears. It's still there, but you barely notice it. But I think when people see me using this, they're usually looking over my shoulder or something, so they're not really looking at it straight on. And then the light catches it a lot more and it looks a lot more intense than it actually is when you'd actually be using it. I get the concern though, because it's still there, it'll never disappear, but if you're focusing on the content of what's on the screen, then you're not really gonna be worrying about the crease. I'll give it a pass just because it's such a new technology, but I would like to see, maybe far down in the future, a creaseless folding phone. And I think the benefit of being able to have such a large screen in your pocket at all times far outweighs the sacrifice of having to deal with a crease. And I think Samsung's really trying its best to take advantage of all that extra screen real estate. They're marketing this as kind of a workhorse phone, and they did that by including a lot of multitasking features that I think are pretty cool. So you can use up to three apps at the same time and even drag files between the apps. Samsung also makes it really easy to be able to switch the orientation of the apps and where they are on the screen. You can also save presets to launch two or three apps at the same time in whatever orientation you choose, which would be really useful if you use the same three apps all the time. Personally, I think this multitasking stuff is really cool and I feel like it'll have a lot of application in the future, but to me, this just doesn't seem that useful. I feel like if I actually wanna get work done, I'm gonna use a laptop or my iPad. Because even though this is a really large screen for a phone, it's not really that big in a kind of absolute sense. And I feel like having three apps open at the same time is a little bit silly, especially considering that when you type, the keyboard takes up half the screen as well. And I feel like flex mode is another one of those features that Samsung tried to include on this phone to take advantage of the new form factor that doesn't really have that many useful applications in my opinion. So flex mode basically allows you to take advantage of the new hinge that Samsung developed that allows you to have the phone open at various different angles. For example, in the camera app, if you bend the phone a little bit, the viewfinder will move to the top half of the phone while on the bottom half of the phone, you'll get a preview of your previous shot and the shutter button, which is cool, I guess, but the only time I've ever really used it is just to show people that it exists. I think for me, the only practical application of flex mode that I found was just to use it as basically a stand to watch videos on. Because with this, you don't need to really prop up the phone on anything to watch videos, it can just do it itself. But I feel like the downfall of flex mode and really this phone as a whole is just app compatibility. Certain apps like Spotify and Chrome take advantage of the larger screen real estate really well, but others just don't really know what to do with it. Certain apps like Chrome and Spotify will allow you to use a more tablet style experience, while other apps like Instagram and Snapchat just don't really know what to do with the strange aspect ratio. So the front screen is 25 by nine, while the main screen is 22 and a half by 18. And both of those are highly irregular aspect ratios. And I feel like the best example I have for a bad app on this phone is Snapchat. So if you're using Snapchat on the cover display and you take a picture and send it to somebody, then they will just get that little skinny sliver of the front screen. And if you use it on the main display, they're gonna get a very wide version of Snapchat. And then they'll have black bars on the top and bottom. Now, if you download GoodLock, you can change the aspect ratio of the main screen Snapchat into a more normal form. But on the front screen, there's just no way that I've found that you can change it at all. So if you wanna use Snapchat, you have to open it up to get a usable image. And Instagram will just have two giant bars on the side and it won't even let you use it in split screen mode to take advantage of all that unused real estate. And it's just kind of a shame because these are issues and they're issues that Samsung can't really solve themselves. I feel like it'll be a long time until folding phones are popular enough for app developers to be incentivized to actually make apps for folding phones. And I really hate to say it, but I feel like when Apple makes a folding phone, that's when it's really going to change the game. But I guess until then, you're just going to have to deal with some minor inconveniences conveniences here and there. So last but not least, let's talk about the cameras. So this phone has five lenses in total, a 12 megapixel f1.8 wide sensor with dual pixel AF, a 12 megapixel ultra wide sensor f2.2, 12 megapixel telephoto f2.4, and two selfie cameras on the front and main screens, uh, both the exact same 10 megapixels f2.2. And to be totally honest, I wasn't really that impressed. Not only because the camera quality wasn't as good as I was expecting, but also because this camera module isn't the best that Samsung has. The Note 20 Ultra, which launched at the same time as this did, had a superior camera module. And for $2,000, it seems kind of like a slap in the face to not get the best that they have. I think that the images that come out of these cameras are okay though. They look pretty typical Samsung where everything's just a tad over sharpened and a little bit oversaturated. 
but overall not too bad. What I think is a little bit cooler about the camera system though is how Samsung has been able to take advantage of having two screens on the phone. So if you're taking a picture of someone else, you can use the front display to give the subject a little preview of what their picture is going to look like. And if you're trying to take a selfie, you can swing the main cameras around and use those instead of the selfie camera. So not only do you get access to the higher quality cameras, but you also get access to the different lenses. So if you're trying to take a picture with a group and your arms aren't long enough, then you can just use the ultra wide camera of the main camera system. Video quality I think is also just okay. But Samsung has included some cool features that take advantage of flex mode. You can just use flex mode to prop the camera up, which is great for filming yourself. And Samsung has also included a really cool feature called auto framing, where it'll basically just follow you around. And in my testing, it seems to work pretty well, but the camera movements are really intense and are <laughs> kind of distracting sometimes. Especially if it's not tracking your whole body, it seems to go kind of wild. Video stabilization also seems to be pretty good. I went hiking with my friend and I got a shot of us just walking along the trail and it seemed really smooth even though the ground was really rocky and I probably wasn't holding it that steady. You can also switch between lenses like the ultra wide to the wide to the telephoto, but keep in mind that the switch won't be very smooth. It's going to be a very hard cut. Overall though, I feel like the cameras on this phone can pass for flagship, but at the same time, like like I said, it's a little bit disappointing to know that Samsung has better but didn't include it on their most expensive phone. I think it's pretty amazing though how far Samsung has been able to come within one generation of a product, and I think I really have to commend them for that. I feel like it's kind of sad though that a lot of the issues that I have with this phone, particularly with software, aren't really controlled by Samsung. We just have to kind of wait for app developers to solve these issues. And there's still one big question mark that remains about this device, and that's durability. So it hasn't been out for that long, so nobody can really really say how long it's going to last, but that's probably the number one question I get asked when I show people this phone. And I'll be keeping this phone for at least a year and I'll be giving updates on that question, but at this moment in time I can't really give an answer for that. Like the folding phone and the flexible screen technology is just so new that nobody can really say. But even despite all that, I can't help but love this phone. Having such a large screen in your pocket available to you pretty much any time you want is pretty game changing honestly. And as an added bonus, this is to this day the only phone I've ever had that Apple users have cared about besides an iPhone. Like anytime I use this in public, like at the office or at the UPS store or something like that, people are always going like, whoa, like that's a cool phone. Like what is that? And you know, if you're into that, you know, that is an added bonus. So if you want to flex, this is the biggest flex. Anyways, that's all for this one. Remember to smash that like button, and if you enjoy content like this, think about subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace!